Welcome to Subject to Change. Today, Lauren and I are talking with Graham Boyd, and he's sharing some insights on business. One of the chapters in my book is very much around developing the capacity to think in this way, because this is a way of thinking that people develop after they have fully mastered linear logic. The opposite of a truth. This is a way of thinking where, for instance, you're able to recognize that the opposite of a deep truth might be another equally deep truth rather than a falsehood. Mm. Mm. And once you can recognize, you know, I'm, I'm regularly in arguments with people. And part of what we then explore when we're in conflict is, are we both saying something that is deeply true and yeah. in opposition. And you're going to show us the book. Excellent. Yes. That's the book. Wonderful. So, Rebuild the Economy, Leadership and You, a Toolkit for Builders of a Better World. I, I need and that toolkit. <laughs> Yes, yes, get it, get it. <laughs> I will, yeah. definitely. I will be getting it as well. <laughs> Please do. You know, and, Wonderful. You know, my co-author, Jack Reardon, he's an economics professor in the US. And between the two of us, you know, and, and Jack is somebody who has been on his own personal journey. Mm -hmm. So you know, whilst most people see him as an economics professor, there's a multifaceted human being in there. And he's, he's just actually published a novel, um, Swimming Backwards, over there, which is a novel about wow. identity, gender identity, and oh. all of that sphere of things, you know, which is not the standard book that you expect an economics professor to publish. <laughs> I think that that's marvelous. R really? R re like, I always wonder what, what people do when they're not doing what I think that they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> I mean, it's like, <laughs> my, you know, my assumptions set aside. Information through work. What should economics be if it starts by assuming that rational, a rational decision is unique to each individual at each point in time, rather than something yeah. that is objective. You know, so we, we, we have at the one end that macro scale, and then we have, I think it's four chapters in the book, which is distilling everything that we've come across in terms of how can you support each individual's inner journey towards right. higher adult development in the workplace. Mm. So that the capacity to think beyond linear logic is something that is developed through work. The capacity to recognize processes in the world that span decades rather yeah. than just days or weeks, you know, that all of that development happens in the workplace. An organization is? An organization as a whole, in many senses, is best looked at as a living being mm. and to a large extent is unknowable. And as you were saying a little bit earlier, we really, we really, really, really ought to get away from looking at organizations, companies as things, as property, mm -hmm. and really start to look at them as living beings where our role is far more the role of a parent mm -hmm. caring mm -hmm. for the living being unfolding, at least in the sense of um, in loco parentis, speaking on behalf of a living being that structurally does not have the ability to communicate on its own behalf. And so mm -hmm. we need to do the communication on its behalf. 
And that role can be taken by any person in any organization. And that does something that I think is missing from the work sphere currently, broadly missing from the work sphere is the people like somebody who's, who's um, at the low end of the, con of the current structure feels less connected and less, um, less they, that they have less agency in where the, where the company is going and how it's performing and what it's doing. They feel like a, a cog in the wheel. But if you treat, and this is part of, I think, um, functioning on function rather than title, if you, if you get that spirit of connection and that parenting mindset, talk about tapping into people's will to, to work toward a better future. You've, you've just opened that door in a way that it's usually not open. Yes. Exactly. That's amazing. May, may, I, may I build on that? Yes, please. Please. Fascinated. So, Graham, this is amazing. What's a company for? Recall that I mentioned South Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, about 10, 12 years ago, I started asking myself, what's a company for? What's a company really for? And there's a brilliant book by Charles Handy with exactly that title, which gave me a lot of food for thought. So the first interesting thing, I love playing with words. The word company comes from two Latin words, companis, with bread. The original company was a group of Romans that bonded together to share food with each other, to share resources, because by sharing, collaborating, they could thrive better than alone. Mm -hmm. So in many senses, the original company is somewhat what we would today call an intentional community. <laughs> Very nice. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> you just, you just absolutely sparked Lauren in a way that, uh, <laughs> I can see that happen. <laughs> Excellent. So if we now start to think of a company as an intentional community that just happens to have as part of its intention today, working together to create some kind of value for some part of society mm -hmm. rather than just for the members of the company, you know, that then changes a lot static and dynamic did i understand correctly lauren your work is in architecture interior design interior design yes right. close enough okay <laughs> so let's let's stay with interior design you know it's all well and good to have a magnificent design but at some point you actually need to build the design mm -hmm. you know it's it's not just about design it's also about building and then if you think of interior design, interior design is as much about static elements, systems, as it is about dynamic elements, interactions, movement, flow. Mm -hmm. And the two are distinct, but inseparable. Two of the stories that came in and I go into detail on how we're building companies now in our startup creation program, where we build ecosystems of regenerative startups our way. And the two things I realized, the first thing I realized was, ah, if we think of a company as an intentional community, when we buy or sell a company, what we're actually buying or selling are all of the human beings associated with the company and their relationships with each other. Yeah. We are applying concepts of property to a person. Legally, a company is a person just as much as you or I are. Mm -hmm. And the, the accepted mm -hmm. definition of slavery is the application of any or all of the concepts of property to a person. So no wonder we have degenerative, extractive, 
mm. horrible places to work companies out there because in in a in yeah. a slightly abstract sense the we're treating the company as property which means we end up treating the individuals inside as property mm-hmm. and that removes agency mm-hmm. you don't have agency if you are in any sense whatsoever being treated as property right uncomfortable but good that if the company itself is treated as property then of of course the people within it um, are part of that definition and that's that's uh, that's going to cause me to struggle for a while yes in in a, in a very positive way i think that's really good yes uncomfortable but good <laughs> Excellent. I love that. Uncomfortable but good is a very good place to be. Let's wet our appetite. Hey. I just want to show you one thing to wet your appetite for the next conversation. Okay, Ooh. good. So this graph mm-hmm. shows a hundred companies built the way we normally build them. And it looks much like a typical investor's portfolio. Most of the companies go bankrupt. And the average returns are dominated by one or two unicorns. Mm. If I change one thing, which is instead of the companies being disconnected companies the way we build them today, I build in a systemic connection the way nature builds it. Yeah. None of them goes bankrupt. The average returns are 10 times higher. And even the middle company is doing better than the average in the previous slide. So this, I can dive into, this is one of the things that really gives me hope that we actually can build a regenerative economy with just a few small changes by learning from how nature works. This is, this is what local is, because as soon as you do locally based companies, they are inherently interconnected in a way that you don't see Yes. in, in, the, in the broader world. Perfect. Excellent. And so we will much. be getting your book. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, the two of you. This has been an absolute delight, and I look forward to our next conversation. Yes. Thank Definitely you so need much, a next Graham. conversation. Beautiful. Have a great Thank rest you. of your day.